you're seeing how the mitigated ANUSC 28 operations procedures differ from those you are now using, you should know something about why we have installed mitigation. The USC-28 is the primary system that helps provide secure anti-jam defense satellite communications around the globe. Until now, it could operate in all hostile environments except one. altitudes above 50 miles, there is very little atmosphere to contain the energy release of a nuclear explosion, and a single burst can pose a serious lingering threat to satellite communication links over a wide area. A high-altitude nuclear explosion releases vast quantities of free electrons, creating an ionized plasma field between the satellite and Earth terminals that can linger for hours, even days. Immediately following the blast, the electron concentration is so great, the signal is totally absorbed, resulting in communication blackouts. After several seconds, as the plasma field expands and dissipates, signal recovery begins. But as the signal passes through the plasma field, it degenerates into many weaker signals and suffers from constantly changing multiple path distortions. The recombining of the many weak signals causes amplitude fading and fast phase distortions known as scintillation. These scintillation effects can disrupt RF propagation in an area of more than 1,500 miles. The severity of disruption varies with the distance from the point of detonation and the burst height above the Earth's surface. In the early minutes following a blast, fast fading occurs with amplitude fades and phase shifts taking place in milliseconds. The fade rate slows as time passes and slow fading measured in seconds is experienced. Wideband signals used in the USC-28 also suffer from frequency selective fading, where the phase shifts and amplitude fading are not uniform over the entire signal bandwidth. Frequency selective fading reduces the instantaneous usable spectrum bandwidth. During amplitude fading, the signal strength randomly drops below threshold for periods of time ranging from milliseconds during fast fading to several seconds during slow fading. The effects of fast phase shifting are not obvious. To understand how this scintillation characteristic affects the USC-28, a basic description of how the demodulation process works in an unmitigated USC-28 is provided. When operating in the normal mode, or in an unmitigated USC-28, a Costas loop is used for signal recovery. The receiver voltage controlled oscillator is phase locked to the incoming signal and the demodulated signal is recovered from the in phase or I channel. Simultaneously, a quadrature phase or Q channel develops the error signal used to maintain receiver phase lock. In a fast phase shifting environment, the Costas loop VCO cannot follow the phase shifts. The signals in the I channel and Q channel randomly switch back and forth, and both channels suffer from amplitude fluctuations and random polarity inversions. The receiver ceases to function under these conditions, causing normal SATCOM communications links to fail at the time they are most urgently needed. To counteract this possibility, changes have been incorporated into mitigated USC-28s to minimize the disruptive scintillation effects resulting from high-altitude nuclear explosions. In the introduction, you were shown how scintillation effects can disrupt satellite communications. This section describes the differences between unmitigated and mitigated USC-28s. 
To convert a USC-28 into a mitigated system, wiring changes to some of the drawers are required. Approximately 35% of the total modules in the system are replaced, and completely new software is utilized. Drawers modified for mitigation have MIT added to their nameplates. Mitigated PCBAs are identified with new part numbers. The current USC-28 AFI philosophy and fault isolation capability has been carried forward into the mitigated system. Each printed circuit board contains built-in test points that permit automatic troubleshooting and fault isolation to the board level. It should be noted that mitigated hardware and software are not functionally interchangeable with unmitigated hardware and software. The USC-28 uses several methods to overcome scintillation problems. Interleaving is used for slow fading. Reduced PN bandwidth for frequency selective fading. Frequency hopping to regain performance. Non-coherent demodulation for phase distortion. And forward error correction for fast fading. Interleaving describes a technique where the transmitted data is repeated several times and then spread out or interleaved over an extended period of time. This repetition and separation in time allows the reconstruction of usable data even though the received signal may be missing for several seconds at a time. Interleaving in the order wire is accomplished in three steps. First, each input order wire bit is converted into three symbols in the rate one-third by Turby encoding process. Second, the encoded symbols then go to the interleaver. Here, each of the three input symbols is repeated eight times for a total of 24 sub-symbols out for each order wire bit in. Third, the 24 sub-symbols are then distributed throughout a 13.6 second time period as they are transmitted. The interleaver length for the order wire is fixed, causing 13.6 seconds delay from the transmit order wire input to the recovered order wire output. At the receiver, the sub-symbols are de-interleaved and decoded to reconstruct the order wire bit. Interleaving of the user data is accomplished using eight subsymbols per data bit. The actual time diversity achieved depends on the data rate and the interleaving length selected. Reduced PN bandwidth. Frequency selective fading is combated by narrowing the USC-28 spread spectrum bandwidth. Frequency hopping. A modified single sideband modulator produces a pseudo-random offset frequency. As this offset frequency changes, the spread spectrum moves accordingly, thus producing a pseudo-random hopping pattern. The reduced spread spectrum carrier will hop across the original bandwidth to regain AJ performance lost due to narrowing the spread spectrum bandwidth. The pseudo-random hopping patterns are derived from the address codes. Therefore, not only is the code itself unique to a given address, but so is the pseudo-random hopping pattern. Non-coherent demodulation. Non-coherent demodulators do not require the receiver to phase lock to the incoming signal. When the USC-28 is operating in the mitigated mode, the Costas loop receiver is converted into a non-coherent demodulator through software and by summing the I and Q channel outputs. This results in a valid output signal regardless of which channel the signal may be coming through at any given moment. Another non-coherent demodulation technique uses the Transmitted Reference Auxiliary Channel System, or TRACS, 
When using the tracks mode, the link order wire channel is set to a constant one and used as a reference channel to aid the user data demodulation process. Tracks operation is not operator selectable, but is automatically selected for data rates of 75 bits per second to 299 bits per second. When operating at these data rates, link order wire is not available. Forward error correction. Forward error correction, coupled with interleaving, provides a near-optimum coding technique against all scenarios where individual bits are lost. When operating in the mitigated mode, forward error correction is accomplished by use of onboard Viterbi encoder decoders for both the order wire and user data. Forward error correction provides performance enhancements across the board, but is particularly effective in a fast-fading environment. You have seen how the techniques used in the mitigated USC-28 can give greater protection to the Defense Satellite Communication System. Now you will see how this new hardware and software affects your job as an operator of the equipment. Using the NCV and the technical manual modified for the mitigated USC-28, you will see that the operational changes are minimal and can be learned quickly. First, you must load the mitigated software. The loading procedure is exactly the same as you are now using. After the mitigated software is loaded, you continue with your current initialization sequence. Using the mitigated software, a mitigated USC-28 can run with the entire system scheduled in the normal mode and operate just as it does now. or in the mitigated mode, or in a combination of normal and mitigated modes. It is important for you to remember that connected links must always be in the same mode or they cannot communicate with each other. When mitigation operation is to be scheduled, type the keyword MIT to call up the mitigation display. The left side of the screen shows the current status of the system, code synchronous, interleaver length, and mode select status for each comm transmitter and receiver. The right side shows the scheduled status. At this point, you are going to select the mode of the system by typing in NRM for normal, MIT for mitigation, or NO for a combination of normal and mitigation. It should be noted that the code synchronous and interleaver length can only be selected in the COM schedule display. To schedule the system in the normal mode, type NRM. You will see all the schedule status indicators change to normal mode. If you schedule the entire system in the normal mode, your operations procedures remain the same as you are currently using. To schedule the entire system in the mitigated mode, type in MIT. You will see that all the schedule status indicators are changed to the mitigation mode. Note that when operating in the network and the CSU is changed from one mode to another, all links will be broken. The CSU automatically re-enters the network in the new mode. All the COMRTs are reset to standby and must be rescheduled. To schedule the system in a combination of normal and mitigated modes, type in NO. Type in the modes given in your NCB. Notice that when the system is in the NO mode, the same COMRT can have different modes for the transmitter and receiver. However, Receivers and transmitters that are going to communicate with each other must be in the same mode. When the CSU is operated in the mitigation mode, the software defaults the search rate to 200 bits per second. The slot assignment per frame of all CSU receivers to continuous order wire and the IT mode to beacon. Caution. When switching from mitigation mode to normal mode, the IT will remain in the beacon mode. 
After scheduling the system in normal, mitigation, or a combination of both, follow your standard operating procedures. Note that the display has been modified to show the word MIT for the CSU and the letter M to indicate when a COMRT is in the mitigated mode. The procedure for scheduling an individual COMRT has not changed, although there is a new entry in the schedule display that needs to be made. You must now select the mode of operation for the transmitter and receiver of the COMRT. To schedule the COMRT in the normal mode, type NRM. In the normal mode, the COMRT operates as it always has. To schedule the COMRT in the mitigated mode, type MIT. After selecting the mitigated mode of operation, additional entries must be made. Code synchronous mode provides maximum performance for long fading scenarios. Selection of the code synchronous mode will only be displayed when the transmit or receive data rate is 75 times 2 to the n bits per second. Using the transmitter in code synchronous mode requires patching the reference clock output of the USC-28 to terminal equipment. It also requires that the reference clock be scheduled to the same data rate as the transmitter. Your NCB will instruct you to type in yes or no. The interleaver length for the transmitter and receiver is selected next. Selections of full, one half, one fourth, one eighth, one sixteenth, and no interleaving are permitted. Full interleaving will vary from 6.8 seconds to 13.6 seconds, depending on the exact data rate. There are some additional differences between the mitigated and normal mode of operation. The mitigated COMRT is designed to operate from 75 bits per second to 4.8 kilobits per second in the mitigated mode. In the normal mode, the mitigated system will operate from 75 bits per second to 2.5 megabits per second. External coding is not used in the mitigation mode. The internal Viterbi encoder decoder is always in operation during mitigation. The internal Viterbi is not used for normal mode operation. The mitigated COMRT can operate only in TDM or continuous order wire. When operating in TDM mode, the software selects the proper slots per frame. When in normal mode, the COMRT can operate in all the same modes as an unmitigated system. When operating in the network and the COMRT mode is changed individually, the link will be broken. The COMRT goes to standby then automatically switches to the new mode and re-enters the network. All the previous parameters are carried over to the new mode. If a parameter change is required, the COMRT must be rescheduled. Turn on and initialization are the same as for an unmitigated USC-28. After initialization is complete, additional steps are required to set up for mitigation operation, depending on the network requirements specified in your NCB. From a cold start, the first decision that should be made after the turn-on and initialization is complete is whether or not the KGV-9s are to be used. To use the KGV-9s, schedule them the same way as for an unmitigated USC-28. If the choice is not to use the KGV-9s, no operator action is required. The next decision to make is whether or not any of the links will be mitigated. If the choice is not to mitigate at this time, no operator action is required, 
and you are ready to enter a mitigated system into the net in the normal mode. To mitigate the CSU or any COMRT, you call the mitigation display by typing MIP and pressing the return key. The next decision is to either put the entire system in the mitigation mode by typing MIT and pressing the return key or type NRM and press the return key when it's desired to change an entire system to normal mode. Select a mixed mode by typing NO and pressing the return key. When the mixed mode is selected, it is necessary to individually select either the mitigated or normal mode for the CSU and each RT transmitter and receiver. Note, to restart a mitigated system after a power loss, use the same procedure as for an unmitigated system. The system will recover to the conditions existing when power was lost. To schedule mitigated RT transmitters, start by performing the same procedures used through back-to-back -back mode as you've been using for scheduling unmitigated transmitters. The first decision after completing back-to-back -back is choosing either mitigated or normal by typing MIT or NRM and pressing the return key. When mitigation is selected, the next decision is whether or not it is to be code synchronous. Note, code synchronous will be an option only when your transmit data rate is 75, 150, 300, 600, 1200, 2400, or 4800 bits per second. Operating in code synchronous mode requires patching the reference clock to external equipment. The next step is to select the interleaver length. If NRM is selected, code synchronous and interleaver length options are not available. This process must be repeated for each transmitter to be scheduled. To schedule mitigated RT receivers, start by performing the same procedures through back-to-back -back mode as you have been using for scheduling unmitigated receivers. The first decision after completing back-to-back -back is choosing either normal or mitigated by typing NRM or MIT and pressing the return key. When mitigation is selected, the next decision is whether to operate in the code synchronous mode. Note, code synchronous selection will only be displayed when your received data rate is 75, 150, 300, 600, 1200, 2400, or 4800 bits per second. The next step is to select the interleaver length. If NRM is selected, code synchronous and interleaver length options are not available. This process must be repeated for each RT receiver to be scheduled. When making an active link mode change, the first decision is whether to change only the RTs. When the answer is yes, the next question is, will the new mode have the same RT parameters? If this answer is no, you must call the SCED display and schedule the RTs before continuing network operations. When the first decision is to change more than just the RTs, or if the RT parameters will remain unchanged. The next steps 
are to call the mitigation display and schedule the system. If the CSU mode has been changed, all the RTs are automatically set to standby. If comm links are required, you must call the SCED display and schedule the required RTs. If the CSU mode was not changed or if the comm links are not required, no other operator action is required prior to continuing network operations. The RTs will be in standby if the CSU was changed and you did not reschedule the RTs. Review. To review, there are three operational modes you can schedule. Normal, mitigated, and a combination of both. Normal mode operations are the same as you are using for an unmitigated system. Note that when operating in the network and the CSU is changed from one mode to another, all links will be broken. The CSU automatically re-enters the network in the new mode. COMRTs get reset to standby and must be rescheduled. When the CSU is operated in the mitigation mode, the software defaults the search rate to 200 bits per second the slot assignment per frame of all CSU receivers to continuous order wire and the IT mode to beacon. Caution! Switching from mitigation mode to normal leaves the IT in the beacon mode. The IU display has been modified to show the word MIT or MIT when the CSU is operating in the mitigated mode and the letter M to indicate when a COMRT is in the mitigated mode. In the mitigation mode, the COMRT is designed to operate from 75 bits per second to 4.8 kilobits per second. In normal mode, the COMRT has the same capabilities as an unmitigated system and will operate from 75 bits per second to 2.5 megabits per second. The internal Viterbi encoder-decoder is always in operation when operating in the mitigated mode, and external coding is ignored. When operating in the normal mode, the internal Viterbi encoder-decoder is disabled. If encoding is desired, external devices must be used. In the mitigated mode, the COMRT can operate only in TDM mode or continuous order wire. When operating in the normal mode, the COMRT operates in all modulation modes as it always has. We are certain that you will be using this new technology very quickly. The addition of the mitigation circuitry to the USC-28 will continue to keep you at the forefront of defense satellite communications.